Let's watch. The Murderous Police Gangs of Los Angeles. I'm very excited about this video because this is something that I have uh, talked Since about the before. 1970s. This is something that I've talked about before. This is like really incredible journalism, first of all. Incredible journalism overall. Apparently I'm in it. Uh, I don't know why. But these are the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department gangs that exist in LA County. Okay. There have been at least 18 gangs within the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and they continue to brutalize and even murder community members today. My name is Cerise Castle and I am a journalist. I got In a the summer of 2020, I was working for a local radio station here in Los Angeles and I was out covering the George Floyd rallies that were happening across the country, across the world. And I was shooting photos of people protesting. And while I was doing that, two cars with police officers on them in riot gear rolled into the area where people had gathered and they shot people with less lethal munitions. And although I identified myself as press, I was shot and the resulting injuries landed me in the hospital. A few days after that happened, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department um, killed a teenager who was working at his job in the Compton area. Pretty, very quickly after this young man was killed, his name is Andres Guardado, it was reported that his killing may have been part of a gang initiation. And there are some new allegations against the deputy involved in Guardado's case who did not fire his weapon. Civil rights attorneys accused Christopher Hernandez of being part of what some call a sheriff's department clique or gang. While I was bedridden, I started researching the history of the gangs in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And I found out that this dates back at least 50 years. I spent six months researching deputy gangs within the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Yep. Uh, conservatively, I estimate I read about 100,000 pages of legal filings. And what I came away with was a 15 part series detailing 18 gangs. Yes, she did an interview with uh, Chapo as well. This is her. Gangs that I was able to confirm the existence of within the department. There are the Little Devils, Posse, the Wayside Whiteys, the 2000 Boys, the 3000 Boys, the Jump Out Boys, the Banditos, the Executioners, the Spartans, the Cowboys, the Rattlesnakes, and the Tasmanian Devils. They have killed 19 people, all of whom were men of color, several of whom were in a mental health crisis when they were killed. Uh, government from the county level, the state level, and the federal level has known about this issue since the early 1990s and no significant action policy change has been brought forth. So let's do a quick run through of the gangs of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. All of them have stuff in common. You usually have official gang tattoos, a hand signal, and a way to join, usually by shooting or killing a civilian or doing something like falsifying paperwork. These are just a few of the gangs operating within the LA Sheriff's Department. The Wayside Whiteys. The Wayside Whiteys was a gang of white deputies at the Pitches Detention Center in Northern LA County in the 1980s and 1990s. Their sign was having their middle fingers crossed to create a W for white. The Linwood Vikings. The Vikings were a gang based out of the Linwood Station. Their tattoo was of a Viking and their hand sign was an L made with the thumb and index finger for Linwood and they were one of the most powerful and most violent gangs. A lot of their members became leaders in the department. The 3000 Boys. The 3000 Boys were based out of the Men's Central Jail in downtown LA. The 3000 Boys are particularly violent because that's where the department would transfer deputies convicted of crimes to keep them away from the public. They're all the Jump Out Boys. The Jump Out Boys operated across the county in the Operation Safe Streets unit 
Their tattoo was of a skeleton with glowing red eyes holding a revolver in the dead man's hand, a popular poker holding among law enforcement officers. They kept their manifesto in a notebook. The Regulators. Out of the Century Station, you have the Regulators, who allegedly have many members working in department leadership. The Executioners. At the Compton Station, you have the Executioners. Their tattoo is of a skeleton with a Nazi helmet holding an assault rifle. Black people and women are not allowed to join the gang. The Banditos. The Banditos operate mainly out of the East LA Station, and their tattoo is of a skeleton wearing a sombrero with a smoking revolver and a sheriff's badge. They have a culture of working backwards, arresting or shooting civilians, and coming up with probable cause later by planting and manufacturing evidence. There are others, like the rattlesnakes, the pirates, and the buffalo soldiers that we know a lot less about. Anyway, I'm here today at a rally, two-year anniversary of the killing of Paul Rea, 18-year-old young man at a traffic stop by Hector Saavedra, who's East LA Sheriff's deputy, who was a prospect. I'm gonna need some proof on this. Bro, it's literally, I personally do not understand when you are watching something that is delivering proof to you and you go, I'm going to need some proof on this. Like this is extensively fucking covered, uh, uh, an incredible news reporting. For the deputy sheriff gang, Los Banditos. Now, how do I know that? Because two deputies who work here were, uh, interviewed on national TV. LA Sheriff Deputy Hector Saavedra Soto. Is he a prospect for the banditos? Yes, he is. He's a prospect. <laughs> Paul Gray is my What? Hassan Piker doesn't kind of suck because he bought a house. It kind of sucks because he lives in Los Angeles, but I can't recall him being involved in any LA orgs or actions in the short year and a half we've been organizing. He's just some online dude, not an active part of our fight. What the fuck? I mean... She's literally fucking followed by a bunch of organizers that I do know. If she wanted to, she could have easily reached out, dude. What the fuck? As many often do, we are currently watching one of those... Uh, we're currently watching the product of one of those community organizers, uh, famous on Twitter now, People City Council, and their efforts to get this in front of as many people as possible. They reached out to me and wanted me to watch this. And so did the, uh, the uh, Gravel Institute. Okay? I am incredibly fucking reachable. I don't know why the fuck organizers will say, Oh, dude, I never actually tried to reach out to him. Like, what am I supposed to fucking magically know? That you're doing stuff? That's so strange, dude. Like, so is this a hashtag ad? I mean, it's also an issue that I've talked about in the past, and this is a wonderful fucking way that they are, are describing it. Easy to consume, perfectly made for, um, perfectly made for, uh, Taylor made for uh, stream for mass consumption. <laughs> I'm just some dude in Texas. I have no problem getting your attention multiple times a day. This is true. $3 million shelter, no shelter possible below that. If I moved elsewhere, motherfuckers would say, you're gentrifying. If I moved elsewhere, motherfuckers would say, you're trying to evade taxes. I like where I live. I have the fucking opportunity to be able to live where I like. Why the fuck wouldn't I do that? Like, it is literally not a, a, a fucking bad thing. I think it'd be good for Hassan to speak out about gentrification in LA and possible solutions to the problem. Yeah, good thing I never talk about that, you know? And I never did, and I never will. Except I would make so much more money on the right. All of those are completely a charisma suck, okay? They are a black hole of charisma. I could fucking run that entire market if I wanted to. And it's so fucking easy. You already rely on pre-existing biases that have, uh, that have been fucking 
permanently melted into the minds of so many people through social conditioning. All you got to do is be like, is it all of your worst fears are actually true. And anyone that doesn't have a nice house doesn't have a nice house because they didn't work hard enough. I worked really hard. And then I would get a fucking fat paycheck from Fox News and a fat paycheck from like dumbass think tanks that uh, are funded by literal billionaires and millionaires who have every interest in continuing this fucking system. But no, go ahead. Fucking cry about me, dude, for doing something that, again, very fortunate, but thousands of very fortunate fucking Americans are able to do. Son, he was murdered anyway, on June let's get back to the actual fucking, uh, you know, thing that we were looking at. Sorry. Um, it was a, supposed to be a traffic stop. Um, they pulled him out of their cars with guns. Um, when they were questioning why they're getting pulled over, they were... The guy who's going to become a police officer is the bastard here. Other guys who use their money on how they like are the bad ones, but me, a millionaire, can agitate against others and not even stand your ground with an organ LA because I don't like it? What? Okay, dude. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, you're uh, totally correct. Uh, you're you're uh, totally fucking correct, dude. I, I love when... I love when I just, like, make something up about... Uh, I just completely fabricate something about the person I hate. They're scared because they didn't know why they were getting pulled over. And they're getting pulled over with guns, that, you know, to their heads. And being told that if they move, they're going to shoot their fucking heads off. Um, they pulled the driver out of the car. And um, when they pulled my son out... They're gonna handcuff my son, and, and I know my son was feared for his life. He just from childhood, you know, growing up, seen me harassed before. Um, he ran. He didn't even get four feet away when Hector Saavedra shot him multiple times in the back. Paul's father was actually killed by sheriff's deputies, so he grew up his whole life being afraid of this deputy gang. So when they asked him to get out of the car. Naturally, he was afraid, so he attempted to exit that interaction, which is perfectly within his right, since he was not the driver. Um, unfortunately, Saavedra um, pursued Paul and shot him in the back multiple times um, right here, and Paul died. The, the two deputies that killed Anthony Vargas were also prospects for the East L.A. Sheriff's gang. Anthony Vargas was shot by Sheriff Deputy Nicholas Perez and Sheriff Deputy Jonathan Rojas. Are they also part of the Bandidos gang or prospects for the Bandidos? Prospects? Yes. They're prospects. How do you know they were prospects? You know, just personal conversations with them and them saying that was one of their main goals to be a... For the record, the reason why there's like hella fucking uh, protection there is because... These dudes in the gangs, in the sheriff's gangs, the sheriff's deputy gangs, do not fuck around. They will murder you, okay? They do not fuck around at all. As a matter of fact, the journalist that uncovered all of this now has to walk around with, like, actual security and a fucking vest wherever she goes. Part of this gang. Uh, August 12th of uh, 2018, my nephew, um, he had attended a barbecue. You know, he was just following what he always did, you know, whenever there was a barbecue, he showed up, took his rub. He thought it was the best rub, so hey, get it out there, right? He took it and, um, you know, that was the last time, that was the last day that we, we seen him was August 11th. There was a robbery call that had went into the East LA Sheriff's Department um, where an individual had said that they had their $12 watch stolen. They gave a description of an individual, 30 to 40 years old, over six feet tall. Um, you know, it fit nothing of Anthony's description, wearing a completely different color shirt than my nephew had on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, two deputies from the East LA Sheriff's Department were, you know, servicing the area at the time, and they saw my nephew walking down one of the fire paths on his way home, and they, you know, targeted him. My nephew was punched in his head multiple times, punched in his ribs by these deputies. Um, you know, before falling to his knees where he was shot at 16 times. It was just like, bam, 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 like continual shots. One man shot and killed by Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies. Investigators say the young man did have a gun on him, but they're not sure if he was a part of the robbery. Anthony was not known to carry a gun on him. Um, he slept in a room with my mom, which is his grandma. He slept directly across from my seven-year-old niece at the, she was seven years old at the time. 
Anthony was not known to carry a gun. You know, he was not known to carry weapons. He was You've never seen him with a gun. No. Never. If you get in a shooting, that's a definite brownie point. And according to these deputies, to justify those shootings, they plant weapons on the people they stop. There's been multiple occasions where they say, hey, we got a guy that has a gun and he's running from us. In reality, that person never had a gun. And they would say, oh, it was a phantom gun. It was something that really wasn't there. So you have personally witnessed that? Yes. And we started reading the DA report and matching them with, you know, other things that we found on our own, which includes like, you know, the, like the autopsy report, you know, we found out through forensics that the gun that they're saying my nephew had on him had absolutely no DNA on it. None of my nephew's DNA. And I find it strange because these, these deputies are saying that my nephew had. Damn, how the fuck did that happen? I wonder. I'm sure that it wasn't planted or anything like that. I'm sure it was, you know. Had the gun in his hand and he was like an imminent threat to them. But if he was holding a gun in his hand, there would have been fingerprints on the gun. Immediately after I released the first part of the series, I began receiving death threats. Um, I regularly receive threatening messages on my social media. I receive phone calls from people threatening my life. I have, my loved ones have received these messages as well. Uh, the sheriff of Los Angeles County has instructed anyone that I reported on to personally sue me. And when I attempted to attend a press conference featuring the sheriff's department, I was detained. Why? <laughs> I think the sheriff's department has decided to target me since I released the series. We started like just finding shit and everything we would find out about Anthony or about the sheriff's department, we would come out and talk. And the more we would come out and talk, the cops would pass by the house and they would park on the corner of our street, which they still do to this time. They would park in the corner of our house and they would sit in our car and they would eat their lunch. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a corner store from where our family residence is. So the kids will walk to the store and they can't even walk to the store because they see the sheriff's department right there and because they know what they did to Anthony. And these are kids under the age of like 15. Holy shit. Are you fucking serious? Deputy Art Gonzalez is a documented hero, a former Marine who became a deputy, rewarded by the LA County Sheriff's Department with the Medal of Valor in 2018 for saving the life of a four-year-old boy. The time is 10.59 and we are on the record. Okay. Now he's sounding the alarm of a group of 15 officers inside the Compton station with matching tattoos. Chad, he's not a fucking hero because he was a Marine. That doesn't automatically qualify for heroism. The heroism comes from fucking speaking out against something like this. Okay, come on. You got to fucking give it to someone uh, when they're when they're like actually fucking whistleblowing on something that literally puts your life completely in jeopardy. Your life is in jeopardy. And your family's lives are in jeopardy. Twos, allegedly known as the executioners. I now call them a gang because that's what gangs do. They beat up other people. Deputy Gonzalez, um, he's, he's afraid for, for his safety right now. He also reports that graffiti appeared at the station entrance. Art is a rat, and that was placed at the keypad. By the way, that shit... 1,000% is what people say when there's, like, uh, uh, just this attitude, the fraternity, the boys in the blue, like, the thin blue line. You just never, you just can't break that code of conduct. Pad to get into the parking lot, so that's the most visible place in the entire station. His lawyer says he's now on leave from the department and in fear for his life. 
In addition to having to hire security guards to go with me when I do my job, um, I've had to start wearing a bulletproof vest. Um, many of these death threats are credible and I've been told by people inside the department that I should be careful. So I invested in this. This is a bulletproof vest. I, yeah, this guy comes with me very often. Why do you keep doing it? I continue to report on this story because no one else really is. And seeing the closure, I suppose, that I'm able to bring to families. Um, you know, oftentimes they had suspected for years that their loved one had been killed by a deputy gang member. And I can come along and confirm that. And I've also seen my reporting make a very real difference in some of the ongoing cases. Um, just recently, the Democratic Party of Los Angeles County uh, passed a resolution asking for the sheriff to resign. And now that, you know, everything's came out, like there's a complete, you know, turn. And like, I can't tell you how it feels to like see the tide turn. You know, like it's fucking groundbreaking and it's like, it shows you the progress that's being made. You know, it just makes you want to keep pushing more and more because when we were fighting back then, like that push now has come, it's come even further. And it's just like, it fucking, it encourages you. The Sheriff Alex Villanueva, the, the lead gang member of LA County. He's a bandito himself. This is 10, 3,000 boys. Deputy Mark Romero is one of them, and now today I believe he's a homicide sheriff, but he's a 3,000 boy underneath. Uh, we're out here spreading the word. Thanks, Jordan, for the five tier one. Gift. Everyone's saying it. Google LASD gangs. Everyone should be uh, tagging their neighborhood with Google LASD gangs. Google LASD gangs. Fuck the banditos. Fuck Sheriff Villanueva. Fuck LASD as an organization. By the way, when you're done Googling 40% cops, uh, Google Los Angeles Sheriff Department gangs. Okay, LASD gangs. We know about your gangs. We're telling our people to Google LASD gangs, and we're coming for your asses. And then there's, uh, there's another woman, Cerise, uh, who has been uh, putting together a series about the gangs in the uh, sheriff's department. So I'm going to take a look at all of this as these investigations are going on. We have video proof. We have pictures. We've taken them to the sheriff's department. We've called the CLC meetings. We've done what we had to do and nothing's gotten done. It's unacceptable. We will send a clear message to the LA County Sheriff's Department that you clean your house. You get your house in order or we will surely help you do that. You have executioners. You have gangs in your own house. Keep going out there and just keep fighting and keep exposing them for what they are and what they're doing because it's, you know, their reign of terror isn't going to stop unless we put a stop to it. So that's, we're not going away anytime soon, you know, like we, we're here to stay. You look good for an 85 year old uh, Korean uh, war veteran. Thank you. It's kind of weird because like the only way that, uh, the only way that you can deal with that is by like using the FBI, you know what I mean? The only people that can like ac accurately and adequately investigate this would be the Department of Justice and the FBI. My mom only watched CNN got debated into watching it for at least an hour, so please be on your best behavior. I've been spamming this for 30 minutes just to get a clip to show my mom that you read chat. Feels bad, man. Aww. I mean, I, I do read chat, yes. I don't know if I was on my best behavior, though. I'm sorry. But hi to your mom. That was really good. That was really well done. Congratulations to the Gravel Institute for, you know, making another great video. All these daily streams, whether big or whether small. So there he is again, the sun is streaming. The sun is streaming. You wait.